What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with another reaction video. Why did Nehru reject UNSC seat for India? Flashback with Palki Sharma. Always love reacting to her. Before we can dive into this one, make sure you guys subscribe. Ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. <laughs> It was August 1950. A very important meeting was taking place in the United States. Two individuals were involved. One was Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. She was India's ambassador to the US, also Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru's sister. The second individual was John Foster Dulles, an advisor to President Harry Truman. Later on, he became the US Secretary of State. Now, letters written by Vijay Lakshmi Pandit reveal what happened at that meeting. The American side had a proposal. They said, let's remove China from the United Nations Security Council. Let's put you, India, instead. Basically, a switcheroo. Ooh. China goes out, India goes in. You don't need a time machine to know what happened next. India doesn't have a permanent UNSC seat, so obviously, New Delhi rejected that proposal. Something similar happened again in 1955. This time, the Soviet Union offered India a permanent seat at the United Nations Security Council, but once again, India declined. Mm. Jawaharlal Nehru was prime minister both times. He was also his own foreign minister, so no one to blame for his decisions. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to present day, and the issue has become a political lightning rod. Nehru supporters say it was the right decision. His critics call it a Himalayan blunder. So what exactly happened in 1950 and 1955? Why did Jawaharlal Nehru reject the offers? And was he right in doing so? Time for a flashback. I feel like India's always been like one who stands on their own. A country, well, since I've been reacting to it, that's, what, that's how I've known India. A country who stands on their own and India does what's best for India. India doesn't choose sides. They are a country that in that, and while standing on their own and not choosing sides, they also don't depend heavily, right, on other nations. They and you see now India is rising very quickly and again, they still to this day I feel like they're not choosing sides or and so I feel like that him rejecting or them rejecting the proposal kinda of goes along with how India is as a country. But let's listen to this. Let's begin the story in 1945. The United Nations was created that year. It had a security council with five permanent members. The United States, the Soviet Union, China, the United Kingdom and France. Okay. Now this China was not ruled by the communists. It was ruled by the nationalists. Both mm. sides had been fighting a civil war for two decades, but in 1949 that war ended. The communists, led by Mao Zedong, God won. Dang. The Americans were not happy about this. They did not like the idea of another communist country in Asia. So what did they do? They blocked Mao's regime. They did not allow the communists to occupy China's UNSC seat. Instead, the nationalists held on to it. Now, clearly, this oh, was wow. not viable in the long term. You couldn't have a pseudo China in the Security Council. So Washington came up with a plan. Take China out, put India in. John Foster Dulles pitched this plan to Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. She told the Americans to go slow since India was not keen. Then she wrote to Prime Minister Nehru. We know he rejected the offer. But the reply letter tells us why he did so. What's that? It would be a clear affront to China and it would mean some kind of break between us and China. Mm. India, because of many factors, is certainly entitled to a permanent seat in the Security Council, but we are not going in at the cost of China. Okay, so he's saying he would have went in. So... Had it not been them switching with China, he would have been on the council or he would have accepted an offer to be on the council. And he said they, they're certainly entitled to a seat on the council. But if it's going to be at the cost of China not being on the council, then we're going to have to refuse the offer. Huh. OK, this is interesting. So Nehru had two concerns. First, he thought China would be angry. He thought Mao would turn against him, which he did anyway in 1962. Oh, wow. But we'll get to that later. Really? And second, Nehru thought it would undermine the United Nations. So he said, invite China back, then give us a permanent seat. Mm. Obviously, that was a non-starter. By 1951, the US and China were at war in Korea. 
There was no question of inviting China back into the UNSC. So the offer to India disappeared. Was Nehru right in dismissing the Americans? Well, his supporters mm. have two things to say. One, the offer was not genuine. It was more of a feeler from the US. And two, the US mm. was trying to drive a wedge between India and China to try and recruit Could've India been. into the Western alliance. Is any of this true? Well, honestly, we don't know. John Dulles seemed very keen on it. He even asked Washington columnists to build public opinion on this issue. But all we can do now is speculate. As for driving a wedge, China did that themselves. 12 mm. years after this offer, they attacked India. Even today, the relationship is frosty. So if Nehru's idea was to keep China happy, it did not work. Yeah. But pretty soon, he got another shot. In 1955, this time, the offer came from the Soviet Union. What's more, there was no China angle to it. The Soviets did not want a replacement or a switcheroo. They said, let's expand the council. Let's add oh. you, India, as a sixth member. The offer came from this man, Nikolai Bulganin, former premier of the Soviet Union. So what do y'all think of the... Before we go to the second offer, what do y'all think of the first offer? Looking back at it now, do you think that India should have taken that offer since, I mean... uh. China ended up attacking them anyway, and there were already there are tensions already formed after that anyway because he seemed like he was just trying to make China happy, which seems like years later that China wasn't happy and they attacked India anyway. So yeah, I think should have taken the offer, but but hindsight is twenty twenty, and he could not have foresaw that coming when he said no to that offer. Or do you still think he made the right choice, or do you think like a lot of Nehru supporters say? Um, that it was never a real offer in the first place. I love to know what you guys think, uh, or that the U.S. was trying to build some tension between India and China, which I mean that tension happened anyway. But I, I, U.S. probably was trying to build India tension with India and China. I don't doubt that. But what do y'all think of the offer? Should he have taken it? Did he make the right choice? Did his reasons make sense for not taking it? Looking out in hindsight, now that you know what happened, do you think it'd be smarter to take it now that you know the events that unfolded? Drop it in the comment section. No messengers this time. The offer went directly to Jawaharlal Nehru. And what was his mm. response? Same as in 1950. We are opposed to pushing ourselves forward to occupy certain positions because that mm. may itself create difficulties. We feel that this should not be done till the question of China's admission and possibly of others is first solved. Hmm. So back to square one, the same yeah. old argument about China. Yeah. Now there are two things which stand out in Nehru's statement. One, he is clearly hesitant. He says India will not push <coughs> itself into any position. And two, he talks of others being admitted into the UNSC before India. Who exactly are these others? And why should they have entered before India? Yeah. Again, we can only speculate. Either way, Nehru rejected this offer as well. Bulganin actually agreed with him, in fact. The Soviet Premier said he was just trying to understand India's position and the time was not right. Hmm. Was this another missed opportunity then? In hindsight, yes. But Nehru did not see it that way. To him, these were not serious offers. In 1955, he was questioned in Parliament about this issue and his reply was this. There has been no offer, formal or informal, of this kind. Some vague references mm. have appeared in the press about it, which have no foundation in fact. And the plot thickens. Oh. We know that two offers were made in 1950 and again in 1955. We know yeah. that Nehru rejected both these offers. Why then did he say no offers were made? Huh. Did he not consider them serious enough? Or did he regret turning down both of them? Again, I'm afraid it's impossible to know. The US offer had very little chance of becoming a reality. They wanted to swap China with India. To do that, you must amend the United Nations Charter. And for that, all permanent members must agree. But would the Soviet okay. Union have agreed to this? China was mm. a fellow communist country, sort of like a junior partner for the Soviets. Would they have agreed to replace that junior partner with India? It seems highly unlikely. But then again, we never tried. The Soviet offer in 1955 seems more plausible. No replacement business there. India would have been added as a sixth member. Who knows? Maybe the US would have agreed to it. But once again, we never tried. Nehru had his hey. own reasons for what he did. He was an idealist. He thought the United Nations... Huh. So again, he had two first offer, 
second offer, let both of them pass. And it seemed like both, he let them both pass because China was not included. Whereas the first one, he said he didn't want to swap and for China to be excluded. Whereas the second one, he said he wanted, didn't think India should join before other nations, which I assume still, he probably thought China should be included. What was going on with Nehru? And how do y'all feel about him letting both offers, rejecting both offers? I mean, I feel like today India is starting to rise, definitely. And uh, India is about to boom. India is about, but how do y'all feel about him rejecting these offers? Nations Charter was the Holy Grail. But most importantly, he thought India was not ready. His statement to Bulganin confirms that. So do notes written by him in 1955. In June that year, the Prime Minister travelled to the Soviet Union. He spent 16 days there. He travelled almost 13,000 kilometres. And during this tour, Nehru wrote something very interesting. We have said that India is not anxious to enter the Security Council at this stage, even though as a great country, she ought to be there. Mm. So Nehru was in no hurry. He thought India had more boxes to tick. In hindsight, we can say it was a missed opportunity. A permanent seat would have helped India on multiple occasions, like on Kashmir, oh. or the 1971 Bangladesh war, or the war with China in 1962. Each time we were at the mercy of world powers or hoping our friends would bail us out. Take the 1971 war, for example. India was fighting Pakistan to liberate Bangladesh. The United States tried to push multiple resolutions against India. They wanted India to stop the offensive. Thankfully, the Soviets vetoed them, all of them. Mm. But what if they hadn't? India would have had no choice but to stop fighting, perhaps. Bangladesh may still have been East Pakistan. So having a permanent seat would have helped. As for Nehru's reasons, there is no point guessing. The answer may lie deep inside the archives of the Ministry of External Affairs, maybe in some scribbled notes or a letter written by diplomats. Many people have demanded that these files be made public, but so far it has Ooh. not happened. So everyone speculates from analysts to politicians to journalists. It's an engaging exercise, but it's also a futile one. But I here's a, what I will say. Missed opportunities from the last century should not deter India now. We may or may not have been ready in the 1950s, but today we are definitely ready. India deserves a place at the United Nations Security Council. It is the largest democracy in the world. It is also a nuclear power with 1.4 billion people. If That's India crazy. does not deserve a seat, makes you wonder who does. But do you know what the irony is? Both the US and Russia still support India's permanent seat. In fact, so do the UK and France. Only oh. one country is blocking New Delhi, the same of China course. for whom Nehru rejected two offers. That's crazy. Time machines may not exist, but if history does repeat, I think India has learned its lesson. That's crazy. The same country that's, that Nehru rejected the deals for because he felt like it shouldn't have been swapped and they should be a part of it. It's the same country now holding out. Wow. Uh, and so, yeah, okay. So it sounds like India, like what she said was India deserves a seat in a 100% biggest democracy in the world, nuclear power. Why wouldn't they deserve a seat on the council, United Nations Security Council? Uh, so I guess uh, to me, I thought it was more of a U.S. Soviet Union was on separate sides that they weren't both on the council in the beginning. And that's why I said uh, India usually doesn't pick sides. They're a nation who stands alone. Uh, they've created co incredible connections with so many different countries now. Uh, but I guess they're not required to do anything like if one country goes to war with another country or anything. Uh, but... That's not what this deal was, so sorry about me saying that in the beginning. Uh completely apologize. This was just an opportunity that India deserved, but Nehru rejected both offers, it sounds like, in support of China, who is now the reason that, probably the reason that they don't have a seat, which is insane. But that's all we have. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed that reaction. Make sure you check out this one as well. It's your boy D. Neil. Out.